Did the James Webb Telescope just capture something never before seen? It may have recorded the very first moments of a supernova. And not just any star, but Betelgeuse, our red giant neighbor about 550 light years away. On March 15, 2025, Webb sensors spotted a strange flash, a quick burst of brightness, coming from the area of Orion's shoulder. If this turns out to be true, it would be the first time we've seen a star explode right as it happens, not hours later. Don't worry, Earth is safe. But this might be the most amazing light show we've seen in ages. It's like a cosmic blink caught on camera. On that night, Webb might have seen something amazing. The first infrared signs of a supernova-like flash. The data shows a sudden jump in infrared light, like a quick cosmic blink right as stuff started shooting out. But let's be clear. This is just a possibility for now. We haven't confirmed that Betelgeuse actually exploded. You'll see a note on screen saying possible detection only. No supernova is confirmed. Still, if it's real, these would be the earliest moments we've ever seen of a star dying. Before now, we've only seen supernovas hours or days after they started. Our instruments catch the light after it's already bright, once the shock wave reaches the surface. But Webb's images hint at something earlier. Imagine, a star that's been fusing elements for millions of years finally collapses. Its core caves in, sending a shock wave outward. Then boom, a weak infrared pulse shoots across space. What secrets could be hidden in that first flash? How much stuff did the star lose right before it blew? How dense was the area around it? That initial pulse, that first sign of activity, could change what we know about how massive stars collapse. So, are we seeing the first cry of a supernova? Or just some sensor noise? A weird blip? Or normal changes in the background? The answer is important. If it's real, it's a huge moment, bringing us right to the point where a star can't hold itself together anymore. But for now, it's like a door slightly ajar. Let's take a peek inside. To understand this possible cosmic blink, we need to understand what supernovas really are and why those first moments are so important. We'll compare different types of supernovas, explain why Betelgeuse would be a type 2, and show how early light patterns can reveal a star's size, how dense the area around it is, and how powerful the explosion is. Think of it as seeing a crime scene before anyone touches anything. Supernovas generally fall into two groups. First, core collapse supernovas, types 2, IB, and I see, happen when big stars run out of fuel and collapse. On the other hand, type IA supernovas are explosions of white dwarf stars that happen in binary systems when they gather too much mass. The main difference is that core collapse marks the death of a single massive star, while type IA is a white dwarf exploding. Betelgeuse, a red supergiant about 700 times the size of the sun, is nearing the end of its life and is a good candidate for a type 2 supernova. It's about 4,600 light years away and less than 10 million years old, so its core is destined to collapse, though likely not for another 100,000 years. A Type II explosion would start with the star's outer layers collapsing, followed by a shock wave that has to push its way out before light can escape. The early light patterns capture this unseen process. In a Type II, the initial rise in brightness over minutes to hours tells us how big the star was. You can see how quickly the gas cools after the shock passes through it. The first few minutes can show hydrogen lines in the spectrum, which also tell us how dense the area around the star is and how fast the shock wave traveled. In a type IA, the rise is usually slower and doesn't show hydrogen. So, catching these early moments is like getting to the crime scene before the evidence disappears. The earliest photons carry the purest story of the explosion, untouched by later events. This is why Webb's potential capture of the first infrared minutes is so important. It's not just about seeing a bright flash, but about catching the DNA of the star's final moments. Now that we know why early supernova light patterns are so important, let's piece together what Webb might have seen. We'll look at Webb's infrared light patterns and recreate the data to show the birth cry of a star's death. Let's bring that data to life. Imagine this, Webb's instrument, set to observe near-infrared light, starts its observation on March 15, 2025, at exactly 2.18 universal time coordinated. At first, the field looks normal, but within minutes, a sudden spike appears in the light curve, a rapid increase in brightness. 
At the starting point, the light is steady. After five minutes, the signal has increased. After 15 minutes, it doubles. By 50 minutes, the infrared peak is clear. The light pattern shows a classic early time ramp, which could mean we're seeing the end of the shock wave breaking out or the start of the cooling emission. At the same time, Another instrument observing in a different range shows a warm glow of low-energy infrared photons from rapidly expanding gas. The first spectra taken show a smooth curve rising with small features that might be hydrogen lines. It feels real because it could be. This is how a death begins. Not with a bang, but with a warm release of expanding gas. If it's real, this would be a first in astronomy, capturing a supernova's infrared light during its first hour. No optical telescope has ever seen this stage. The physics happening in these moments is pure and untouched. A star dying in its quietest, most telling moment. And as it begins, we realize we might be seeing the very heartbeat of collapse itself. But why does this first hour, this infrared rise, matter so much? What can these fleeting photons tell us about the size of the star, the density of its outer layers, and the material around it? From core collapse to shock breakout, this is the most honest version of the explosion. If we ever want to understand how massive stars end their lives, these first moments are key. A supernova's early light pattern is more than just a flash. It's like a stellar biopsy. The time it takes for the light to rise, measured in minutes to hours, tells us directly about the size of the dying star. A faster rise means a smaller star, while a slower one means a larger, more spread out area around it. For a red supergiant like Betelgeuse, we expect the rise to take several hours. But catching the first 50 minutes allows us to narrow down that range considerably. The density of the area around the star also shapes the first light. A denser outer layer traps photons longer, softening and delaying the shock breakout. A thinner one lets radiation escape sooner and faster. The slope of the infrared rise helps measure that density. Combine it with the star's size, and we can estimate how much mass the star was losing before it exploded, which we still don't fully understand for stars in their final years. Then there's the material surrounding the star. Some dying stars shed mass in their final months or years, creating a shell of gas and dust. If the shock hits this material early, we see a brief bump in brightness before the normal rise continues. Webb's infrared detectors are especially good at spotting these early bumps which tell us how chaotic the star's final breaths really were. Finally, this helps us understand the mechanism of the explosion. The first flash helps us distinguish between shock breakout and shock cooling. Breakout is brief and reveals the moment photons escape. Cooling is longer and shows how the ejected material expands and radiates energy. The temperature curve can separate the two. Together, these factors allow scientists to piece together the explosion and trace the chain of events back to the collapsing core itself. But a supernova isn't just a light show. It's a symphony, a cosmic event with many messengers. In addition to light, we might see neutrinos, gravitational waves, and coordinated signals across the electromagnetic spectrum. Neutrinos come first, then gravitational waves, and finally light. It's like thunder before lightning. Let's hear the whole orchestra. When a massive star's core collapses, it sends out a burst of particles called neutrinos. About 10 to the power of 58 neutrinos are released as the core implodes. If this flash was real, neutrino observatories would have recorded a sudden spike in detections, arriving hours before the photons and serving as the first warning of a supernova. Then come gravitational waves. An asymmetric collapse, where the core doesn't implode evenly, sends ripples through spacetime itself. Instruments are now sensitive enough to pick up such signals from a supernova within a few thousand light years. If the collapse was turbulent enough, we'd expect a brief gravitational chirp arriving between the neutrino burst and the visible light. Finally, the full electromagnetic cascade begins, starting with infrared, then optical, followed by X rays, radio waves, and possibly gamma rays. If Webb caught the start, telescopes would follow watching the shock evolve across wavelengths. This coordination is made possible by networks, which link neutrino detectors worldwide to trigger telescopes before light even arrives. It's like a cosmic weather system. Neutrinos are the thunder, gravitational waves are the tremor, and light is the storm's illumination. 
If this was Beetlejuice's moment, then the full orchestra may already be playing. Some signals have arrived, others are still on their way. That's the beauty of multi-messenger astronomy. We don't just see the universe, we hear it and feel it, and now perhaps predict it. And with the light and echoes captured, we look to what happens next. In the aftermath of a supernova, new dust and molecules begin to form as the shock wave expands and cools. Webb could watch the first molecules of new matter emerge from stellar death. In the minutes and hours after a supernova begins, the chaos gives way to chemistry. As the ejected material expands, it cools rapidly, enabling molecule formation, particularly carbon monoxide and silicon monoxide. In Webb's infrared view, these molecules appear as glowing features. If Webb continues observing the same region, it could detect the glow of newly formed dust grains. Dust creation has been observed in past supernovas, but never so early, never so close. This time, we could witness dust's first breath. Supernovas are major dust factories in the universe. The carbon, oxygen, and silicon forged in the dying star's core are blasted into space, cool, and form interstellar grains, which become the raw material for future stars, planets, and even biology. Observing that formation allows us to measure dust production efficiency, which shapes our models of galactic evolution. Death begets creation. One star's collapse seeds another's birth. And in the fiery remains of this explosion, we see the beginnings of tomorrow's chemistry. Through Webb, we're not just watching light, we're watching matter emerge one molecule at a time. Let's be clear, Webb isn't filming Betelgeuse exploding. It's detecting light that began its way hundreds of years ago. If this is a supernova, it already happened, likely before telescopes even existed. We're only catching up now because light takes time to travel. Betelgeuse is light years away, so there's a time delay. Also, Webb's resolution doesn't give a detailed view. It captures light patterns, not spatial images of shock fronts. You won't see fireballs or expanding shells in detail, just a brightening point. That's still amazing, but it's not science fiction. Each data point is interpreted through models, not filmed. Also, not every supernova is tied to a gamma-ray burst. Betelgeuse is unlikely to produce a gamma-ray burst. So, this flash probably won't come with lethal gamma radiation or jets of particles. Finally, Earth is not in danger. Even a Betelgeuse explosion wouldn't harm our planet. At most, it would shine brighter than the full moon for weeks or months. Amazing, but not apocalyptic. Betelgeuse is the closest supernova candidate, close enough that its explosion could be studied in detail. Its proximity, size, and state make it a watch list object. Despite its status, Betelgeuse is not about to explode. Studies suggest it's still burning helium, with core collapse likely at least years away. Its dimming, once feared as a sign, was later blamed on dust. This star still has time. Still, if it did explode, the effects would be impressive. It would shine nearly as bright as a half moon for months, visible even during the day. Detecting it help us improve early warning systems. It's not just a time bomb, it's a lab, a teacher, a mirror for how stars eventually complete their life. We watch Betelgeuse not to fear it, but to learn from it. Imagine witnessing a star's final heartbeat, not in silence, but in flashes, pulses, and ripples because this is the closest most of us will ever get to the death of a star. This could be the earliest moments of a supernova ever observed. Webb may have recorded the first minute of stellar death. We don't know yet if it's real. Could still be noise or something normal. But if it holds up, it will be a milestone. The light we see now started traveling centuries ago, and we are its final audience. Expect updates soon. Observatories are responding, and light patterns are being refined. This story isn't over, it's just begun, and we'll follow it. Humanity has looked up at Betelgeuse, knowing it would explode. That day may have just arrived, in Betelgeuse's time. In 2025, light from that moment might finally be reaching us, and Webb may have been watching at just the right time. On March 15th, Webb's instruments picked up a sudden spike in brightness, climbing for 50 minutes. It wasn't an asteroid or a mistake. It looked like the beginning of a supernova. If true, it would be the first time we've witnessed stellar death in real time. Normally, 
astronomers catch supernovas hours to days after they erupt. But Webb operates in infrared, capable of catching the shock breakout, the moment light escapes the exploding surface of a star. It's like seeing lightning before thunder, but on a cosmic scale. And this isn't just any star. Betelgeuse is one of the closest red supergiants. When it goes, it will be a Type II supernova visible in daylight, shining brighter than the full moon for weeks. No danger to Earth, but an amazing sight. Right now, astronomers are checking detectors and telescopes. It could take a few days to confirm, but if what Webb saw is real, you're living through one of the most events in modern history. A star has died and we were here to catch its final breath.